Yes, good evening everybody, welcome back on board the Voice of Us. It's Thursday, it's 9 o'clock, you're live on YouTube, so of course it only means one thing. And one thing only, it's time again for that wee fun time of the week. It's the Thursday Night Forum. We get a four ball on, we invite you all in, throw up my doors, and we'll let the chat run. And you guys' comments and questions are ultimately going to sort of go to guide the direction that we go. But let's be honest, there's only one direction. It's destination, Brendan. It's destination press conference. It's destination tomorrow, probably 12 o'clock. Can't wait. So, as I said, it's four ball. We've got three classic guests tonight, as usual. We've got Bottom there sporting the beautiful new Black Away Cat. It's, of course, the man himself, the Judge Mark Kearney. How are you, my man? I'm doing very well. Yourself, Steve? A good, good. A nice sweet Easter egg then. I see you pre ordered and you get it that day early. So, what's your thoughts? Just straight out of the bag. It's a lovely strip, mate. I, I go to the shorts as well to match it. It was really nice. Uh, in fact, Celtic got in touch with me to to advertise it on the pod, so I got, I got one early, you know what I mean? It's, it could be part of a podcast, isn't it? <laughs> there you go, mate. Looks like that was good. I'll be picking that up myself. I didn't pre-order. And underneath me is, he's normally Mr. Sunday morning, but we've managed to coax him out. He is the younger of the hogs, the man with the sharp opinions, as sharp as the haircuts he'll give you down at bar, hard bar bower. How are you, <laughs> brother? That is Davey Hogg. I'm doing all right, mate. I'm doing fine. Uh, ED Pharmacy called me to uh, to try out their new uh, their new stuff, and it's working well too. <laughs> well, rise to the occasion. <laughs> and last, but certainly by no means least, top beside me here that is, of course, the man that he runs everything. He keeps the engine ticked over, and he's a big quiz master and fun all knowledge. Phil McGinley, what's happening, my man? Aye, all good, mate. It's a very uh, dignified-looking Thursday night forum tonight. You've uh, stolen the <laughs> Sunday Blairer team, the dignified Sunday Blairer, so hopefully we can bring that to the table tonight. Aye. There's standards to be kept. We'll, we'll all try, we will try. It says, listen, there's a million and one things that I'm sure everybody wants to talk about regarding the Brendan Rogers incoming um, press conference that we're definitely getting tomorrow. But before we do that, just get a couple of wee bits of things to do, a wee bit of housekeeping we call all that good stuff. Of course, as I said, we're live on YouTube, so if you're watching there, and for whatever reason you haven't already, take that two seconds, flip over, hit the bell icon, subscribe to us. If you like what we do, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to get a wee bit of mental help us get the traction down, reach out further, you can share our content. It all goes a long way to cracking that fabled algorithm and getting the word out there. If you want to become a Boise Bus member, completely optional, but if you do, it's $1.99. It doesn't get you any extra content because I say every time we are as cheap as a Rangers signing because it's $3.99. All our content costs you nothing. It just helps us with running costs because putting it together doesn't cost nothing. Also, if you want to reach out and listen elsewhere, we're on ED, ED, we're on ED Farms, I'll get to that. We're on EPL Index, we're also yeah. on Spotify, but everywhere else you want to listen. So there is options if you want to listen on the go. Also, Twitter, check us out there. Boise Bus Official and all our handles are there if you want to do that. Two sponsors. First, up to the top beside me is PiSports.com, long-standing one, giving you some match day munchies in the house. So if you want a couple of donor pies, get your body over there and fire in bus 1888 at the checkout for a nice round 12.5%. And I'm ED Pharmacy in the heat. There we go. There's our other sponsor is ED Pharmacy. So if you've got a problem rising to the occasion, unlike Celtic, get yourself over there, place an order. They'll do same day. Uh, delivery in the central Scotland area and when the magic beans arrive you can make sure that you are ready to go like a genetic jackhammer <laughs> happy days put in bus 10 and it'll get you 10% off your order and they've extended it for another couple of weeks such as the uptake for all you randy bastards out there so it's done it's over let's get cracking over 150 so far in. Nice welcome aboard. Get those things going through. Pretty sure there's only one thing to go to Tom. It's Brendan Rogers. But before we dive into that, there's, there's been some other news and there's been yep. some other rumours. So, you know, listen, we'll be talking about Brendan to our blue in the face and it's the only blue other than ED Farms we'll talk about on this podcast. But <laughs> there's a few other things. And the first is Odin Tiago Holm. Mm-hmm. It's been made official. He'll wear the number 15 squad number. Synonymous with Chris Commons, is that fair to say? And he has officially signed five-year deal, round about two point five million for Falengra, midfielder, mm. sort of more robust holding type midfielder. It's over the line. We briefly spoke about that. 
just want to ask you guys real quick, is that, that doing anything for you? Obviously, it's we'd say legacy signing, but is it good nonetheless to get somebody in the door straight away, Phil? I'd say so, I I mean, we spoke about it when the, the links first came up, because it's that thing where we don't know too much about him. Uh, there's one of the things you'll have to wait and see him in person. But going by what the clips have seen, his trait seems to be he can win the ball from deep and carry it quite a distance, which is something that when it comes to a midfield, it's more like passing it out of midfield. He seems to have the ability to uh, pick up the ball from deep and just kind of run past people. So that could be a good outlet. See if we're in the Champions League and we're under the cosh, and you need to try and just get an out ball and just get out, essentially. That could come in handy by the looks of it. But um, no, I'm quite excited. And as soon as I saw the picture on the day, we were wearing that shirt that Mark Sporting just now. I just went, ah, this guy looks like a baller already. So just seeing that picture alone, I've decided, ah, this guy's class, man. So there you go. That's what I'm saying about him. But no, overall, I'm quite excited, again, to, to see what they we can bring to the table. Usually when the, you've no heard of them, that can intrigue you a wee bit more. So, yeah, yeah let's see what we get. Uh, well, he's got that, uh, he's got that early years Michael Lustig sort of Scandinavian <laughs> porno tash stroke goatee That's... combination on the go. Maybe you get him down to hard and get that whipped half. But, uh, <laughs> David, boy, is that doing anything for you? Home, I was uh, mostly doing his backflip, but we want to see how he <clears throat> in the back, yeah? I nah, hope he doesn't try doing that backflip on the pitch, but uh, he'll end up getting two footed by somebody. But uh, no, I, I think he looks, from, you know, like it's, like Phil said, don't know much about him. Uh, he's been named in a shortlist for the Golden Boy. I noticed he's in some good company with Jude Bellingham, Gavi, Javi Simmons, Folium Wurtz. I mean, no chance he's winning that. Uh, but, you know, if he's in that top 100, it's been no- noticed out, you know, playing in Norway, then. He must be doing something right. What I did pick up <clears> on <throat> that I liked about the signing was he's on a five-year deal. So yeah. this, it looks like they're continuing to go down that route. Uh, not only, you know, signing guys, while we didn't obviously have a manager, but we've been looking, obviously, going through our scouting. And they've obviously liked what they've seen, and they've managed to get them onto a five-year deal. So obviously protecting themselves, if we've got there an asset, uh, and hopefully he hits the ground running. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. And just real quick on you, eh, Mark, one last word on Odin Holm. Last week when we spoke about him, you were only too convinced. He, is he the fact he's a Golden Boy nominee? Is that tickling your buzz? <laughs> With that guy from Norway, is that? Oh, Norway. Yeah. He's up for the Golden Boy. Apparently that's, that's a lot of uh, utter shite, Steve. Some of them, they're going to find 50 guys for all these leagues and just, they just put them out. I mean, I'm sure we've his. Celtic players on that list before that have turned into anybody's, you know what I mean? That boy that went to France, then barely for talks again, he was on it. To be quite honest with you, I saw his best bits on Twitter earlier on, and I burst out laughing. It was just pictures of him, videos of him running five yards and getting filled. <laughs> he looked at her fucking hopeless, to be quite honest with you. He just he couldn't bring him in. I, I, I dare say, to be quite honest with you, I'm having a laugh here. It looked to me like he's been brought in to nurture into a a, a player of the future. I don't think he's been brought in to, to impact the first team straight away. I think he might might be part of the first team squad, but I can't see him getting a game uh, mm-hmm. in his first season as such. Uh, but uh, if that's his best bits, uh, I'll, I'll be hiding behind the sofa when I see his worst bits, put it that way. Well, speaking of that, as you say, he is a midfielder and you know, we're often discussed you know, that £35 million pounds is supposedly the numbers banned about that Rodgers are going to be given to build on this team with faster sales. Well, we've seen these sort of legacy links from previous players for the last regime. But there's a couple of names that have started to surface that, at least on face value, to me, seem like more a Brendan Rodgers production. I'll file them out there, guys, and again, we'll just chat through because they're, they're names that have been linked. It's now he's official. These have came sort of after he's signed officially. And the first both Interestingly, midfielders, the first one's Kings Kangwa, who's at Red Star Belgrade. He's a Zambian 24-year-old midfielder, centre mid. Seems quite, you know, good bit of experience behind him. 30, 131 games, 19 goals. You ask, well, right, that's irrelevant. Which is he starts? How, how does he come, I guess, as an enforcer? Well, he's only 16 yellow cards during that time. He's been sent off three times as a result of a second yellow card. But... <laughs> Again, that's, you know, we've often been saying what a wee bit of power. He certainly seems to fit that mould. And another name as well, probably no surprise, he's maybe a bit more lofty, is Wilfred Ndidi. Obviously, he's at Leicester. He was about 25 million. I think he cost him. Word is that it's going to be between seven and eight. Should be able to get you him 
this summer. Again, would they have been all about him? 26 year old Nigerian central midfielder. Sorry, he's a winger. Um, and no, indeed, he is a central midfielder. He's a central midfielder. midfielder. 320 games, 18 goals, and 52 mm. yellows. You know, bit a bit a hard man. Certainly, I've seen him play yeah. robust, and I do apologise. Kangwa is a right winger, so is that perhaps spelling out the end for Sierra Bada? So, you know, there's two names that, for me at least, are in that sort of Euro market. They certainly sound a bit more down the Rodgers um, mould. Go yourself straight off, Davey. I mean, we've been sort of crying out, haven't we? You know, we've got guys in the mid, like, you know, Hatati and McGregor wouldn't necessarily say they're combative. We were kind of expecting that for a Wata. We've not maybe seen any great... You know, evidence that, that is going to be the case. Do any of the names maybe excite you? Does it sound more Rogers esque? Uh, the indeed one in, uh, excites me uh, more so because I'm aware of who he is. Um, you know, 230 odd games for Leicester. He's got FA, an FA Cup winners medal there, a, a charity shield as well. But the FA Cup certainly yeah. is a that's a big um, trophy to be winning. He's got Champions League experience, Europa League, Conference League, Premier League. Guy's a baller, he can play a defensive midfielder, can play centre back, can play a little bit for the forward if you need to. He's the he's oven ready. He's he's the definition of oven ready. Oven and he's and he's at you know, you're getting him for nine million top end. I think it's a it's a no brainer for me. Uh, I think he would be steady the ship. He's got that profile at, I was going to say Angie's played with him before, but no, he has not. Um, Brendan has obviously signed him to Leicester from Genk, £25 million. You're not, um, and he obviously he went straight into that team and won an FA Cup with him. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see if we can get him over the line. I'd certainly like to see. I mean, we've got a lot of midfielders, but I think he would, um, you'd walk straight into that team. I think we'd have to move around a couple of players to, to make sure he gets into that starting lineup. Uh, yeah. Certainly, for if, if we're looking to make some sort of impact in Europe this year, he's he's probably the guy uh, that Brendan would probably at the top of his list. Yeah, what about yourself, Marcus? He's obviously not too convinced with these sort of you know young and upcomers like the likes of or the home home signing guys like Didi and even us Kangwa. Did, did he do anything for you? As he says that would clearly be something at least on face value, a Moria Rogers production. There's been talk of will we get a marquee, will we get a big sign? And certainly, you know, Boyce's predicted he reckons the Edward thing to be outdone. Is, is that maybe the kind of area he's going to spend that in? It could well possibly be, mate, because I think we have today a bit more on, on the wings. I think we've got a lot of worth in the team, but the quality's lacking. I think Jota aside and Abada and we we spells we're no we're not creating too much. Uh, Maida does a different job altogether. I think he's yeah. more of a uh, you know, he's a presence more than a an out and out winger, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. so I think we do have to strengthen there, Steve um and that, that could be the that'd be the first area that I would that I would strengthen uh, going forward and then I would move on to areas like uh, central defence and striking etc. But I think we might break our, our transfer spending this season. But maybe know the actual own one player. I think he'd be quite clever to spread his money as much as possible. And I don't think we need as much work done as we did need done with Ange come in. I mean, Ange did well in the market. He bought a couple of six million pound players, a couple of five, four million pound players, and but he got the money back on uh, outgoing players, on out Edward, etc., and getting money back on Ryan Christie, which I laugh about still to this day. <laughs> Wake up next morning's laughing when I brush my teeth. How you managed to get ten million pound for that guy? Um, but no, uh, I think we have to. I was watching a bit of uh, Brendan before we came on there, and it, it did reference, reference Europe. And I think if we want to make an impact, Steve, we're going to have to get a bit more serious, mate. You know what I mean? And that might be going for uh, tried and tested players like that boy in Didi, as you mentioned, and. Just go for it, push the boat out, and if if somebody's going to attract a higher caliber of player, it will be a Brendan Rodgers. I think Ange Postecoglou attracted players for a certain market who trust him, but I think Brendan Rodgers will attract a higher caliber of player. Oh, uh, potentially, I think even if you even if you're talking about a manager, to say for talking to Pep Guardiola, would you trust your up and coming players with in the hands of somebody like Brendan Rodgers? I know I would. And I think that matters with the top level teams when they're when they're putting them out to 
pasture, so to speak. They will look at what clubs have got and what managers working with them. And managers will trust Brendan Rodgers. So I think we'll do a lot of work this summer. But it might just be a case of um, we do, it, we'll see more first team player, players coming in rather than squad padding that we've seen the last couple of windows. And Brendan Rodgers, I think, will do well in this market. I really do. Yeah. Well, as we say, touching on potential would be signings. There's one last one that's floated about, and I'll, I'll give you the first hit at this one. Um, again, it sounds very much previous. It sounds legacy. It sounds very Ange Postacoglu because it's Yang Hyun Yun from Gangwon FC. So, again, he's a South Korean white right winger, 21 years age, 88 games, played at the senior level, 13 goals. Again, it very much fits the mould, doesn't it? But the word in the street is, is that Celtic have made an official offer, which is, and I quote, significant and final. What Ooh. does that mean? So it's a legacy, <laughs> it's a legacy thing, isn't it? Came back to this, um, came back to this earlier on, Phil, that we spoke about where we were saying, in principle, if anything for the previous regime that we were planning for the summer, if it was good enough then, why can't it be good enough now? If that's going to be the case, is that it's like, listen, it's a total unknown. Not like I don't even know anything about him, but is it? What's your thoughts on it? Um, I, I just hope it's no uh, a bit of deja vu here. A winger coming in, and Brendan Rodgers is only just in the door. There's no any <laughs> signing a winger for. I don't know if that happens. Um, on, again, don't 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 know enough about him. Um, and the, yeah, it, it does reek of like it's, it's a legacy signing for manager. I'd imagine. You know, a lot of work was probably getting done before Ange left, and yeah, if we're able to pursue them, and you know, Ange had a pretty decent track record when he came to a lot of players. So, you know, if, he, and if he's a good enough player, he can play under Brendan Rodgers in a different system as well. You know, there's a lot of people who are very much black and white, you know, about you know, different systems and stuff like that. But if they're good enough players, they should be able to adapt. And Brendan has shown in the past he can find levels that players maybe didn't know they had. So. Yeah, we'll just see how it goes if he does come in. Although it is interesting, the wording of that definitive and final. What was it they said? Uh, significant uh, and final. And final, yes. Uh, so it's final. So it's maybe a horse's Bubbles. head in the chairman's bed or something like that. Yeah. It sounds like a, a mafia <laughs> style offer. You know, I read that they wanted to get him back on loan. Is that right? Sorry, sorry, I don't need to drop it. Am I right in saying that they want to try and get him back on loan, like Celtic signing him, and they want him? It has been back mentioned. On? Yes. Hmm. So. Just to, as I say, he's wanting to push on to the big story, but obviously I'll finish off with your, your good self then on that since you've, you've mentioned that David says, listen, it's one of these legacy things, isn't it? Um, talk, we're talking about this transfer budget and where we go and want these Mark says step them up for Europe. You've got to think if these two guys, you know, Holm and this boy, have been in the shop window, so to speak, for us, and there's been things put in place for it, you'd like to think, or you'd at least expect them, I right, in saying that that 30 35 million is excluding these, these two guys. Would, would you expect that to be the case? Uh, yeah, so yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, we've been discussing whether you know, Angie's opened that door to that window and. Obviously, probably with the help of uh, Lowell Jr. Uh, with his mm. list of uh, scouting networks. Um, I just hope it's not one of these ones where it's like, well, if we're going on the South Korea tour, we should maybe look and get more than just one South Korean guy in just, you know, for the mm. uh, for that aspect. I think I hope that's not as a case of that. You know, if they are, because there's some, it's just, I'm reading, I'm, I'm probably reading in too much into it, but I've seen a few different takes and different articles and different stories saying that one minute it's Celtic are wanting to pay in instalments and you know and they're not what they want it all in one and well if we we'll only do that we we'll only agree to that if we get them back on loan and Celtic don't want to do that I just kind of reeks of like a bit of a half arsed effort to get a player in mm. so I'm 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 not I'm I'm not, I'm not that excited about this guy just yet purely because of what I've read so far I'm sure more will come out in the next couple of days and obviously I don't know anything anything about him. Uh, I think he's playing for a team that's fighting relegation at the minute, so they might not be too keen mm. to get rid of a guy who's obviously one of their better performers. But then again, I wouldn't read too much into that either because we signed a certain Yakamakis that uh, played for a team that got relegated, so yeah. I wouldn't yeah. and think of that. But, you know, that one, I don't know about you, Phil, but, like, I, I, I feel a bit meh about that guy. Underwhelmed? Too... No, I mean, you could say that. <laughs> Not, just not probably, having ready that boy. 
Not of, not of and ready, pub me. No, 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 indeed. <laughs> well, uh, definitely not indeed. Listen, <laughs> we've, we've done a wee quick round robin, so let's get that right in the bin because there's only one topic to get around to. And we'll start immediately with Mark on it. But before we do, I just want to we mentioned there's over 250 in the chat so this is where you guys are really going to come to the fore because this next subject i'm expecting every single one of you guys to have been able to see it tell us exactly what's been said because of course we've had some official club vt for the man himself with the pearly whites and the adonis bronze so we got a wee snapshot earlier on which was him basically sitting there and i'll just paraphrase what he said it was a wee sort of instagram clip where again he's thanked the support thank he actually says thank you for the support i've received since being named i guess alluding to both club and externally he says he was proud and honored for the opportunity once again to manage the club and more importantly, he said he hoped to repay the faith of Dermot and the board. First time round, it was more thank you to Dermot, this time and the board. But then he also elaborated and says, but also very importantly, that for the fans. So to repay faith to the fans, sort of laying a nice wee sort of oh, like making, I suppose. And he says he hopes to make us all proud and wants us to dream again. There was a wee bit of reflection on what we achieved previously was there. And most importantly, signed off by saying that he wants to move forward together as mm -hmm. one, which was a big thing that we were shouting out for, which was obviously unity across the board, whether you like him or don't like him. But before we came on, and talk about terrible timing, 29, Celtic fired out a nearly 15-minute interview. So guess what? We've not had the chance to watch it, but Mark was a wee bit late, and I believe he got through roughly half of it. So I'll hand you over to Mark. He can tell us what he heard. Then we'll break it down. But if you guys have seen the whole thing, fire in, get your comments in. What was the key points? What did you like? What were you concerned about? If anything, let us know. So, Mark, take it away, mate. I only saw about five, six minutes, but he referenced uh, Dermot Desmond again. For the second time, which I found reassured, because that just confirms what we've all heard, that it was Dermot Desmond to push the button on this guy. And that makes me think that he stepped in and took the best man for the position rather than looking to the usual markets at the City Group, etc., or whatever plonker has been sacked for an odd job. So that's good to hear that he's been he's been name-checked. Um, he referenced again Europe. And I don't think you sit in your first communication with the fans as such and... Don't mention and mention the fact you want to improve the club in Europe without having at least the desire to take Celtic to at least the next level in terms of, uh, you know, Celtic have been pretty poor in Europe for a long time now, and it, that included under him. Although he did take us to the knockout stages a couple of times, it wasn't just the, the total out and out failure that some people mm -hmm. will tell you that he was in. He referenced Carl McGregor, the usual kind of stuff, uh, the first six minutes or so, but. The key positives I noticed for it was the fact that he mentioned Europe because that tells me that he's wanted to build something. And he mentioned yeah. the fact that he was privileged to come back and he, he's, and, he, and he thanked the fans for accepting him back in a, in a roundabout way. I, I want to be a bit um, cautious with these figures. It's kind of about 30, 35 million. And you're only repeating what you've, you, what you've read, Steve. -o. I think it's yeah. been I think it's been mentioned mostly in like like. Celtic Twitter and Facebook rather than any credible sources. I, I think it's dangerous for, for certainly for me to be thinking that's a, a figure that Celtic have given him to spend. I think if he spends half of that, you know what I mean, it, it could be on three brilliant quality additions and you might be a bit let down in the last couple of days of the window thinking, okay, we've got £20 million pound left, why are we not spending that, you know? And uh, I, I don't think that Celtic, that's just my personal opinion on it, I don't think Celtic set an actual budget is such as say you could just say you've got 10 million to spend and you kind of go above a, a million or whatever i think it's a case of maybe targets identified and sell to it will say yes no whatever and yeah. i think he's been reassured a, a sizable budget in terms of the, the players he was looking at before who were above celtics uh go zone so to speak i think they've they've said to him look there's a bit more leeway now. We 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 always were in a much much better financial situation. We know you the reason why we you left the last time, 
and yes. we are ready to back you in the next the next stage, Steve. And I think it's just just for me personally, I'm not going to get into this window thinking we've got ten pound to spend in this way to shop. And if I don't spend the ten pound, I'm going to be disappointed. I think the money we spend, as long as we spend it wisely, mm-hmm. I'm happy with that. But I, I think these money, these figures getting banded about. I think the first came for a, a WhatsApp group chat uh, leak, and the was included member was saying about. Okay, new hit balls for the youth team and new goal posts for the women's team and all the rest of it. It was just a lot of shit. But that's just my opinion on it, Steve Owen. I just, for me personally, I want to temper it as much as possible. And take, I'm not expecting Celtic to spend 30 million. Yeah. But I, I, will, I think we will. I genuinely think though, we're, we're going to spend more money in this window than we have seen for a while because... Right, we've, got it, we've, we've, we've got it, Steve Owen. We've got it, mate. You know I mean, there's no doubt. You, you can't hide the money. It's in the balance sheets. So why not spend it? Aye, well, there you go. As it says, there's some comments that are starting to filter through. Um, and it appears a big thing there, David, that was mentioned was Europe. That's probably something that we've never really seen a manager properly talk about it. You know, Ange gave it about wanting to improve and looking at, at Europe. But for him to come back and make that as a, as a go, because, you know, Ange comes in to a team that have had to, you know, he said they picked, they've had to pick themselves back up. He's inherited a team that are, you know, top of the pile, straight off the back of a treble, back to back Champions Leagues. And I believe he made mention to, you know, talking about being a challenge, picking it up, which is clearly not the case. You know, is that a good early sign, a good indication that, you know, mentioning Europe, or is that maybe going to be something that he's going to get flogged over the back, a stick to beat him around the head with? Do you think it was you think the right decision to mention Europe and do you think that's shown ambition or do you think it's maybe a potential misstep, David? I think it's quite transparent for us to see the, the why he's came back. There was a lot of talk of what's it really in for Brendan coming back to Celtic? You know, like there's right away you've got the media trying to spin that if he doesn't win a treble, it's seen as a failure. Uh, anything, anything other than a treble is a failure. You know, but, you know, I think... He has been beaten with that stick that, you know, perhaps Europe wasn't great the first time around. But I think he's been given assurances from the board that we are, we want you to make a mark, you know, make us a force in, in Europe. I think that was something that they were wanting Ange to do, you know. And if Brendan's been approached by Celtic to come in, he's, he's saying, look, it's been quite fairly obvious that you guys were doing this for Ange and bend over backwards for Ange and you were willing to give him this supposed war chest to make us a force in Europe, well then I want that because that's what was missing the first time around. I don't want to be going over to Paris and getting thumped 7-1 and going over to Barcelona and getting beat 7-0. I want to um, go over there and really make a, a real fist of it and now I have a team already, you know, you could argue purpose built, you know, there's now a, there's now a foundation for Brendan to now build that European uh, success, if you want to call it that, uh, on whether it's, you know, getting to a, uh, the last 16 or, you know, we do well in in, Euro- in Europa, go on a, in a Europa League run, you know, we become third in, in our Champions League and head on a Europa League run, which is more than capable, you know, more than a possibility. Yeah. Well, we've seen it, unfortunately, from across the city. The Scottish teams can do it in today's footballing world and we, we there's no reason why, and Brendan, I certainly think that too, there's no reason that we can't do that. Give me the tools and I'll get us there. He got uh, he got Leicester. Now let's remember Leicester they were a struggling, they were a deteriorating Leicester side that he got to a semi final of a of a European competition. This wasn't the Leicester that he that he got to an FA Cup final, beat Manchester City in a league in a in a charity shield, getting Leicester a, a ball here away from f- two consecutive fourth place finishes. Right. This was a Leicester side heading on a downward Spiral. They, they they lost all their money due to the airport shutting across the whole world. Their whole their whole transfer budget relied on duty free, and that's really the reality of that Leicester side. And he and he got them to a, a semi final. And, and there's no there's no shame in getting beat off a of Jose Mourinho's uh, Roma side. Yeah, who got yeah. to a Europa League final last year. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I I think you know, and we've now got a manager that's went away. He's had to learn to adapt to be of being in charge of a team that's not so reliant on being an attacking side, be a bit more pragmatic. And I think he's only learnt and grown from that. And it's only Celtic's benefit now. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does, whether it's Champions League or Europa League. 
Yeah, well, and that's the thing. You know, there's another thing that's just come up. This is Boise. He's been able to watch it, so he's feeding mm. through some snippets there. And, you know, it says there, we've spoken about the Europe thing. Obviously, that's something we want to do. But I guess that line there where he's talking, Phil, about he's never come into a club in such a strong position, mm. that's got to, I suppose, way a wee bit of a clue to the sort of discussions, I guess, that have went round you know, with him and Dermot Desmond the board, does it not? Again, that he's feeling comfortable to come out and Lee mentioned he wanted to do better in Europe and how strong the club are in a position. Because, well, do you know what I mean? There's, as Mark says, the money's there. There's no hiding it. It's in plain sight. Similarly there, he's alluded to that. So, you know, does that fill you also with confidence, that kind of positive chat that he's realising, you know, even as obvious it is, the position that we're in? And that kind of... You know, does that put an arm up the board's back that so much big chat and reflection on how strong we are at the moment that, well, there's no excuse, is there, to not give him what he needs? I think it's been said this week on a couple of shows that Brendan had um, decided he was going to take a wee, a wee sabbatical after getting sacked by Leicester, but obviously the draw of being a Celtic fan and as approached him has obviously brought him into, this, uh, into the job again. But also, I think, other than just being the whole fan part of it, I think this, this, the squad is a thing that's definitely got my interest as well because, you know, uh, you can't just put it down on, oh, yeah, he's a Celtic fan and that's... But there has to be something there to work with that he sees that there is potential there. And, yeah, we've said that a few times, talking about the, the contrast to 2016 to now. You know, that team, even though they won the league that season, they, they basically limped over the line and obviously lost embarrassingly a first division Rangers side in the semi-final. And there were so many players that were on the scrap heap but there's very few players that are on the scrap heap right now, if you even want to call it that. You know, the team's in a really good position. So the attraction is fantastic right now. Other than the fact that it's obviously a Celtic fan, and that would have been a draw for him. There would have yes. been something that he worked with. Can I just go in and go, I can't a fan anyway. I'll, I'll do the job. No, he needs to have something, and there's definitely something to work with. So he sees potential. And this whole talk about double European finals and stuff, it's not hyperbole. He genuinely does believe, and he's trying to get us to believe that um, there is. Team again, mate. To, yeah. Yeah, he's getting his own board with it. He is. He's reeling his right in there. But um, yeah, um, I'm all I'm confident about it. I'm excited about it. So uh, yeah, I'm cannot wait now for tomorrow, four p.m. just to see because then it'll, I know there's been clips put out tonight, but it still doesn't feel totally real to me when I see him at our yeah. press conference at Celtic Park. It's going to feel very real then. It's, it's exciting times, man. So one of the things that we were discussing, as we said, and, you know, we, you and I, Mark, we discussed this in a few shows throughout, you know, before Postacoglu went away, which was this idea that he's bought guys that fit are very, you know, to his system, buys them for a system. But Rogers makes a very interesting thing here, and he says, my commitment is always to an attacking team, to be an aggressive team and a winning team. You know, you can say what you like about Rogers. Part one, it was very possession based. Would I've described it as hyper aggressive? Not necessarily. Do you read any any of the words? Does that make you think that the idea, the notion of you know you can teach an old dog new tricks? He's been away, he's learned a few new things, and he's thinking and looking at this aggressive style that we've had in place and thinking, do you know what? I can I can hybrid that. I can keep that up mm-hmm. and still maintain the winning. But maybe where, as we said, look to some of these. My central defender type guys, we're maybe more at a harder edge. Well, I think when he took over Celtic, he was 43 years of age. Although he, he was a very successful manager at Celtic, there was a lot of room for improvement there, even at a young age. So he's new since then, as you mentioned, he's went to England again and managed against Pep Guardiola, Klopp, Mourinho, and beat them all, beat every single one of them. In fact, he put yeah. five goals past. A Pep Guardiola team, so he, maybe he's improved the same way a player can improve. So I dare say there's his his game plan uh, evolves as much as his vision on football. Now I think it's been a bit a uh, myth that his time at Celtic towards the end was getting a bit uh, crab like. Celtic in his last ten games had nine games without losing a goal, and then his last game. He lost one goal and it was through a pass back that Celtic gave the Celtic had the ball at the park for a Marwell player getting injured. They, they, they took the throw in and scored a consolation goal in, in, a, in a very bad fashion, if you ask me. Remember and uh, thanks, Chris. And um, 
So the myth that Celtic were on a, a downward trajectory, or I mean, the football last season, Steve, was great in spells, but it was very dour the last few months. Let's be honest here. Similar yeah. to Ange Potter, to, to, to Brendan Rodgers' uh, time, there was games that Celtic looked a bit. I always felt under Rodgers, Celtic had, had gears. You know what I mean? And I felt if, if Celtic go uh, stung at all, they would just up the gears. And sometimes in Scotland, I felt like it got a bit too easy for them. Now, the, the two differences for me is, was Ange's team, their philosophy was to force mistakes. Brendan Rodgers' philosophy is to is the possession based but with aggression I do agree some of your stuff is aggressive but play like play along the lines look out for gaps make the make the other team lose concentration eventually and then you pounce on it <clears throat> I mean and I think that can be successful in Europe because if you look at last season Celtic were very naive in Europe I mean we can count the goals that Celtic lose lost uh, through been too high up the park. Callum McGregor losses a game. He, he ended up getting he said injured causing it. Juranovic losses a game being too far too far up the park as well. And I'm all for this aggressive football and I do like it. But I think when you're playing against teams that can match it, if not are superior superior to you, you go have another another string to your bow. And let's be totally brutally honest here. I don't care who it upsets. Brendan Rogers is a better manager than Ange Poster Cogley, both in setup and in-game management is, is on a different level for that guy. So if we want to improve and focus on this, as you mentioned there, Steve, with this uh, aggressive attacking football. Now, we mentioned on, on last Friday's show about, about Celtic alone, that players that go to loan them out to the right teams. Does a, does a Leicester City in England, do they, do they get a lot of success eventually by playing an attacking football in a league that they're mostly underdogs in? I think he over he overperformed getting them to fifth place twice. He overperformed winning them cups, <clears> beating <throat> Chelsea's, beating Man City's in cup finals, getting to the a semi final in Europe. He overperformed by a team who on most weeks are probably defending a lot of the time. So so you you, you flip that and you, you put this guy's vision into a team who are ninety five percent of the time that the favourites to win a match and. You're going to get results, and one thing about this guy is, see if he sees that it's not working, he'll not close his eyes and sit back in his chair that the previous manager was did the quit. Yeah, he'll he fix it. Much, he'll fix it, Steve. He he will fix it. And the game, I think Celtic have been very clever this week where they're, they're putting out a lot of past matches with Celtic and kind of reminding you just how good it was under Rogers. And yeah, you look at these five games if were yesterday, and the one that stuck out, the one that stuck out for me, and I always remember it. I was I was at the game. It was the Ibrox. We won three two. What manager when you get when you when you get to the ten men puts a striker on, and it won us the match. It won us the league. We won the league that day because if they'd won that match, they go three points behind us. But we, but we end up going nine points clear. We won that day. Just finalised the league, and that was a Brendan Rodgers production. You don't yeah. you don't win that match. I don't think under <clears throat> a lot of Celtic managers. No, so so that's guy is involved. He'll evolve, mate, and we'll see a better Rogers this time. So and people come on that on his man, people will do that. But see, he starts winning games. That's what I forgot about. Aye, no, that's the thing, David. I was about to come down here anyway. Aye, no. that, that, that's we saying, bro. I just want, just quickly, all I wanted to say quickly was before we moved on was there was a moment in the Premier League when Graham Potter was heading out the door at Chelsea, and majority of you know, pundits were saying the man to replace Potter at the time was Brendan Rogers. Yep. That's how highly how highly um, rated he is down there, regardless of how Leicester ended up, you know, how it ended up at Leicester. You wipe Leicester out of the out of the equation, people still were saying, look, for me, Brendan Rogers is the guy to go in there and try and sort that Chelsea team out because they, they, they understand the type of quality manager that they would have got there. The guy in charge of Chelsea isn't a football guy. Probably didn't even know that Brendan was even a part of Mourinho's coaching staff at the time and went for Frank Lampard and yeah. the rest is history. But that just showed you the level of confidence that... The, and the English media can be really harsh at times and they still were touting that perhaps Rodgers might be the guy to go in there and try and solve, fix Chelsea's season. And obviously the narrative up here, of course, is Brendan's just come back. You know, he's not going to be the same. He's not going to... So it just shows you... 
my point is really was to highlight exactly what Mark was talking about and the level of manager that we are getting. Yeah. That the English press were pushing for Brendan to go back to Chelsea and try and, and, try and fix that hellhole. That, that yeah, was good. There's, there's no doubt, is it? There's no doubt that he's, you know, it's undoubtedly that he is a fantastic manager. And I think mm-hmm. that was the big thing that we were trying to push. It wasn't yeah. necessarily that we were not discrediting some of our names that were linked. We're saying if you break it down to who's out there, he is clearly by far, you know, the leading candidate. But I think, you know, Phil, what we were speaking about, and just come back to what you mentioned, this is about a strength of the team. We've often spoke about the development of teams, and again, that's a style of playing, how we can improve mm. players. Look at the squad that we've got now. Would you say, in your opinion, it was better or significantly better than what he picked up the first time around? Now, obviously, there were some guys like the likes of Tierney and that and there that are special gems, but do you think mm. he's got a better squad now to mould and shape and build on than what he picked up the last time? Uh, the team's much better now than compared to then. To say that team in 2016 limped over the line had Kazim Richards and Carlton Cole were still on the squad at that point. Um, yeah, oh, so man. I mean, that right away <laughs> says, says all you need to know right then and there. Um, <laughs> the overall, the squad right now, um, yeah, it's, it's a much stronger place. And I've said a few in a few of the episodes I've been on in the last week or so, there's some players there that are sitting on the peripheries that you know, in a year's time. We may be doing a show and going, I cannot believe the season he had, say maybe Haksabanovich or something like that. Well, like, wow, didn't see that coming at all. You know, somebody that's just kind of on the outskirts, a bit like what we saw the last round of Stuart Armstrong, who was just going nowhere essentially. Uh, even somebody like, you know, think back to the first time, like Dedrick Boyata, he was another one that was uh, just doing nothing midway through the season. He makes a call to just drop Eric Sviachenko. After yep. we won at Ibrox, we won the game at Ibrox, but Sviachenko was sort of the, the, the root of us losing the goal that day when Kenny Miller scored. And he never got back in after that. And Boyata came in and was at the centre back that never lost a game that, that season when he came in. So it was like, there's going to be players in this squad right now that are going to surprise us, I think, under Brendan. He will. Um, Rumble, get so. another. Is Turnbull one you think they could fit into his system? He's somebody that I've used as an example, but again, I'm thinking of the Stuart Armstrong thing because he was a central midfielder. It's a bit of a lazy link, but again, maybe. I, I, who knows? Who knows? I say that there, there might be somebody that we'd be surprised about. The end what, of the about season. what about James McCarthy? You know, you can say, I was playing a couple, <laughs> couple, of, games, couple of games here and there. Yeah. A couple nah, of games. <laughs> I, I want to be a fly in the wall for them having a conversation. I really want to hear it. I don't know. Well, listen, I, McCarthy's who I can castle milk. I don't know what that, that accent came from. Do you think he was doing a Joey Barn and taking the piss? I, I, I don't God even know. Geez. It was such a weird, weird <laughs> moment. It just seemed to come out of nowhere. But yeah, was, no, I, I've I'd never heard him speak like that. Never. I think last night he's get him in the bin. He's an industrial bin. He's been hit with a dung hammer. His legs falling off again. Don't expect to see him. But listen, <laughs> let's move on to the big one because it is, of course, you know, it's the, the world exclusive official press conference to the cameras and all that. The more right. now, we've got a wee poll in here, Phil, mm-hmm. my beautiful assistant. Hopefully, we'll yep. be able to tell us how it's gone. If you've not already done it, interact with it. The poll is quite a simple question Does Brendan Rogers or should Brendan Rogers apologize tomorrow? Okay, no, know the results, do you know the results, right? right. I, no, should they? Fuck. Why have we got? Talk to <laughs> there are 159 votes, and I'm pleased to say that 91% have said no, just get down to business, and 9% have said no yes, apology. There, so there you go. go. 91 so, to 9. There you David, go. I've no heard your take on this. I just want to go. We've asked, we've surmised, we've seen a wee snapshot of the kind of stuff that we'd expect to see. People say it's new manager waffle, it's the usual shit. Let's be honest here, he's going to get asked straight up, and he I'd imagine he's probably going to get hammered with question after question, reworded, asking the same thing. Which, which where are you on it? Do you think he should apologize in some context, or do you think that weakens his position? Some things are better gone without being even mentioned. No, I don't think he should apologise. I don't think he needs to apologise. He's a maverick. He's an enigma. He's a phenomenon. He's he's a phenom. He doesn't hold. He walks in the, in a room and holds his head up high. He's not apologising. He doesn't need to. I mean, did he? You know, was I happy the way he left? No. Uh, do I feel like he needs to apologise to me and and the fans? Nah. I'm 
I, I think the apology really is him coming back and doing it on the park. That, that's an apology enough for me. Uh, if there is any sort of an apology, just be like a Conor McGregor or a Vince McMahon and walk in with your, you know, with, with that <laughs> strut and just, just like, like, I did what I did. But I'm back, baby. And I'm like, no worries, Brendan. That's fine, Brendan. <laughs> like, you know, nah, I don't think he needs to apologise, if I'm being honest. No. It makes, like Mark says, what's the point? It doesn't. What's done is done. He knows how people felt about it at the time. And still, some people feel about it now. But I think uh, from even that poll there, you know, out of the 298 people watching live and out of the 150 people that voted, I think, you know, you can use that as a pretty good way of, of measuring what people's real feelings are about it and they're more than just happy to like just get down to business essentially and yeah get on with winning the champions league <laughs> you know i'll fire that over to yourself mark obviously you've been strong to say you don't need an apology you know i'm with you the, the question is yeah. why does he need to apologize and you know i was listening to a few uh, radio things today and that it was brought up in that sort of context and the general consensus there was he's a paid football manager like you and I are paid to do whatever job you're doing. And if you get a better offer, then, you know, business sometimes is business. Obviously, with the emotional side of football, that people maybe, well, I don't know, they, they feel they're entitled to it. I don't believe, I don't prescribe to that. But you don't think it is. But what, what do you think it's going to take, or does it matter, to win over some of the naysayers? And, and I'll bring it out because I want to ask you the Green Brigade. I've seen it on Sky. I'm a member of the Green Brigade and I'm. I'm raging, I don't want him here, and uh, was it apology? I've seen all this kind of stuff, but I've equally seen enough folks saying, as we're seeing the comments, coming back, apology and enough, start winning. What, what do you think, mate? Uh, well, well, Pam's spot on. All he's got to do is promise us he'll be the best version of himself and be the best manager that he can be for Celtic. Apologies are just, apology just the waffle that people are trying to say we are trying to avoid. So you can't have it both ways. You either want to avoid the waffle or you want me a waffle. And to be quite honest with you, I'd rather he just get into business. If he gets asked the question, I think he should just say, look, I'm here to uh, leave a legacy, maybe take finish off what I started the last time. He'll find better ways of explaining it than what I, what I ever will. The Green Brigade are going to give a fuck what they say. Have they not got a fine they want to do or something for the club? Have they not got a, some banner they want to unfurl and slag some country or something never mind talk about celtic managers you leave the rest is who uh, have got an opinion that is based on creating some sort of pretend uh oh no they're always raging about something the fact they worry about that we will we, we'll talk about celtic quite interesting you don't see a lot of Celtic taps in that section funny enough they all wear their own shite no as far as i'm concerned mate that will see if they try to do that at a celtic match tomorrow They'd be booed at the stadium. That would be that the, the, the this pretend theory they've got that they, that they run the place would be flung out the window the more if they did that a Celtic game. Because I can assure you that Mace fans are it's a small sample size, but the what we just seen on that poll is Mace fans are just what if focus on Celtic on the park. What happened before is is the guy's a professional, he's got a job to do, and just let him do the best. I mean as I say, we kind of we've we'll spent the last four years slagging Peter Oil and how he chased Rogers out the door. But then when it suits us, we have to blame Rogers. So who are we going to blame here? Are we, are we going to blame Rogers? Or are we going yeah. to blame the board? Or is it the hokey cokey? Whoever's pissed his off mayor this week, who we blame? It was a mixture of both. Rogers had the ambitions, the board didn't back it, the two of them played a game, Rogers got a job offer, owing three, four times the money, and he walked. If that happens, with football players, I mean, the, the quite honest with you, there was two things that happened there. The exact same thing that happened with, with Ange. His ambition and finances came into play. His ambition to go back to the Premier League, that came into play. Because not only did he, did he prove the fact that he went to a, a, a better potential club that he actually finished fifth in the league twice, yeah, won a domestic trophy in England, got a semi, semi-final with a European trophy. He don't do that with Celtic very often. You know what I mean? And plus, he went for two and a half million pound a year at Celtic to probably five, six, seven million pound a year on a four year contract. So you can't deny the fact that he improved himself financially. David just mentioned there, he was quoted to, for the Chelsea job, and he was actually quoted for the Manu job as well at one point last year. 
right, or maybe a year and a half ago. You don't get quoted for them at Celtic either. So he did take the right decision to go to England. No, for me, I wanted the, wanted the guy to stay. But I'm yeah. just saying, if you're Brendan Rodgers and you're, that, that question is put to you, then he owes me, you, anybody, anybody an apology. Uh, the only thing he owes us, and as I said, I already quoted Pam on this, the only thing he owes us is to, to put the best possible Celtic out in that park, win as many trophies as he can. And that is the end of the story. And as, as I, I'll repeat it again. You either want mere waffling and having to apologise to you, yeah. you want the waffling to stop. End of story, in my opinion. We'll see that, um, Phil. A couple of folk are saying it, and you know, I want to see if you, you agree with that. See this notion of apologising. Do you think that's more a media generated thing? We've already seen, you know, some of the nonsense you guys laughed at the other night, such as Rogers was a failure last time, and all signs yeah. indicate he's going to be again. Is this notion of you're entitled to an apology? Is that is that a media thing? Is that a nice sort of you know coat and dagger way to try and drive a wedge and split? The fan base, do you think if that wasn't ramped up quite so much and fired out there, that maybe the ill feeling amongst the fans would be less so? Yeah, I think it, it it does reek of a narrative they're trying to create, but when you just look at the evidence in front of you, look at the poll we just did there, it's vastly in favour of, no, he doesn't give us an apology. Earlier on in Twitter, obviously Celtic you know, putting up different bits of Brendan content. You know, hundreds and hundreds of replies on it. So naturally, I'm going through it thinking it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. How many people am I going to see here saying, oh, he's still a rat and all that? It was very minimal. For mm -hmm. every nine or ten that were positive, there's maybe one. That, that was like the sort of ratio you're looking at. One where the guy went, oh, I still can't. I believe you can uh, comment on Celtic's post, though. Yeah, you don't have to you can, share yes. them. To yeah, up in your eye. yeah uh, you can do that. You can. There's like so, four and a half million views, and like, you see that green thing? There's like four and a half million views and like a thousand likes or so, or a hundred likes or something. And you go, I'm not very good at maths, but it's not a very big ratio. And uh, and probably all the likes were probably folk that are a member of that thing. I'm not getting against that. Just sorry, Phil. I'm not getting against that more, but. I don't think it was timed well, and I think they were just trying to uh, come out to be affronted that, that um, a guy walked away for Celtic. The, the same folk, by the way, who probably travelled into London to watch Kieran Tierney play every couple of weeks. Fuck off, huh? Fucking hell. <laughs> Crackpots, man. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry, we cut, we cut off your steam there. Yeah, on oh, your no, no, sorry, no, no, I just get, I'm just going about the ratio, you know, at the moment. They're, they're creating this idea that there's some sort of mad, you know, Huge percentage of Celtic support that want an apology and we're saying apologize for what you know, true or false. Did Celtic go on and win the treble that season after Brendan left? True, they did. Did they then win the treble the next season as well? I true, they did. So we didn't exactly implode after he left. Yeah. It was obviously a couple of seasons down the line, but there's different that's not Brendan Rogers' fault. You know, mm -hmm. again, they're trying to push this narrative that he needs to apologize for the 10 in a row failure and all that. And it's like, what was he gonna do with that? Nothing at all. So no, he doesn't owe us any apology. And the reality is, just go on any social media posts about it from the, the club's official account, the vast, vast majority are now very much like, let's go, let's back this guy, can't wait for the season to start. And I love to see it, because I mean, I've been very consistent from day one on here about how much I did not hold any grudges with Brendan. I mean, obviously, when the link first came up, I was a bit worried that there would be a massive tidal wave of negativity. But I'm glad to see that everyone's like, no, do you know what, for the greater good, Let's go. Come on, let's do this. Yeah. Let's all get on board. That's what it's all about. No, it's been, it has it's been it has been positive. I've actually been kind of surprised. And David, you know, it was brought up a few times this notion that, you know, how long have Celtic known this? Now, if we wind back a wee bit, Cal McGregor, he alluded to, you know, this being something that they'd known about. And it suggested that, you know, it's probably been further down the line. But you know, perhaps they knew long before. It came out that Ange was off and the seeds were being sown for the, the Brendan Rogers return. And maybe that's why his boy say had suggested in Jono that we we you know we spanned it out, we dragged it out a wee bit to put out the videos to build up the anticipation, to remind fans of the good over the negative. So when this cracks up tomorrow, are you are you expecting a, a turnout at the stadium? Do you think it's going to be that kind of event or do you think it'll just be very formal? Oh, I think Brendan, he's blockbuster. So, yeah, whether you, you love him or hate him, I think he draws a crowd. Uh, 
he's a big draw as Brendan. So I think he'll you'll see some certainly see a, a maybe not as big a crowd as we as we saw when he was first unveiled as the manager. Uh, but I certainly think there'll be people turning up to turning up to see him. Uh, and as for whether Celtic have known for a while whether this was going to be happening or not, I think I think it's probably if you join the dots together, I think it's starting to add up there, isn't it? You know, he was starting to show face a wee bit at the at the finals, and you know these pictures are getting leaked of and speaking to Dermot Desmond and uh, obviously the unhappy faces after the after the final. It was just all, all these little things just started to, to almost leak out and then when it was starting to get more and more obvious it looked like Ange was was leaving and perhaps Brendan was the was the saviour it was just a case of well we'll just let it rumble I, like, I think they could have announced him a lot earlier uh, and they obviously chose to allow it to um, to bubble under the surface and just allow the sort of doubters to you know to change their mind you know mm-hmm. like I think I think it was um, David Boyce had said it the we're all I had a bit of fun with this on Twitter last week. It was just a sort of just a wee bit of a joke, but um the we're all in campaign that they did for the season tickets. Mm-hmm. You know, there was the uh the famous TIFO, ironically the Green Brigade did when uh Brendan was in charge the first time, the poker table one, yes, yeah, right yeah. all in. And of course the we're all in campaign started maybe just a minute after that. Um when Brendan had appeared was at the semi-final. When the the season ticket renewal opened up, or was it even before that? Because uh, yeah, who knows? I was in the world, but I did see that, and I made the connection. I was like, "We're all in," and I always think of that um, Tifo display with the he's pushing the poker chips into the middle of the table. Let's go all in. I was like, "I wonder." It's surely not. Is this some serious four D chess going on from the board here? Were they thinking that far <laughs> in advance? Surely not. But um, yeah, I did. I did notice that wee connection there, the all in yeah. thing. Um, but who knows? I, I do think it was the Good promo from the from the club. Like I think you mentioned it, Mark, the other day that the 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 media side of things, Celtic have really hit the nail on the head recently with with, with what they're doing, putting out their uh, their, their tweets and just the, the, like yeah, any sort of you. promotion that they've been doing, it's been really clever. Um, going back to obviously the whether you want to blame Brendan or blame the board, uh, you know, in the past it was an unhappy household. Let's put it that way and you know i think it was probably best that they, they, they did separate and us the kids well we're uh you know we adapt the kids adapt to the surroundings around we're just a bunch of kids and we're just gonna have to adapt and i think you know daddy's home and we're all happy about it so let's get let's get let's get this show on the road i'm looking forward to seeing what they do but we have to move on we have to move on and i think it kind of like there's been a lot of rewriting of history when it comes to rogers and one of the things that was was beaten against Rogers was the fact that he, he left during the night and he tried to take his backroom staff with him. But see, the backroom staff at Celtic, they were his staff that he brought in. Ange Postecoglou has tried to totally disintegrate any Celtic backroom squad. He t- he's tried to take Gavin Stratton, the technical analysis uh, uh, coach, and uh, John Kennedy, right? The only person that he's not tried to take is a plonker that he, that he brought in, Harry Kuehl. That's Kuehl. interesting. That's very interesting, but that was something that was used to beat Brendan Rodgers is the fact that he tried to take the backroom staff, right? But it's been totally missed on people that this guy's trying to do the same thing, but the difference is he's trying to take Celtic's long-established staff, members of a team that took a lot of stick for the Celtic fans during the COVID season and probably before that, to be honest. Uh, he's back in a different room, the different guys. Right. I don't no, think we're welcome him back in the room. Man, I'm not dropping. I'm a complete loss of connection. Oh, fucking <laughs> unbelievable! We'll be there for Steve. Folk want Steve back because he walked out mid show. You can't ah, do that. Exactly. Steve. We apologise, Steve. We want an apology. We want yeah, an apology. apology. You're getting nothing. He tried, <laughs> he, he tried to take Regan and Boise with him as well. The bastard. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can't I, take our Regan. He left me behind. <laughs> The Celtic way the more people are going to go into Celtic. I seen that the, the day in Twitter. Uh, the SLO was saying that the Celtic way might be an option for people if they want to go down and see Rogers. They probably come out of the main stand and give a wee wave. Not the main stand, out of the main doors and give a wee wave. So if I get a chance to, I'll be there definitely. Mm-hmm. You want to chin me for my my fantastic views? You you know miss me, but I'm I'm going to try my best to be there the more. Mm-hmm. Nice one. 
But I do, I do listen, I do apologize. I'm pretty sure I was, you know, you all missed me. Are you right? But sure, uh, don't, don't apologize to me. You're sure weakness, mate. I know, no, no, <laughs> I don't like going double down. Fuck you, all. I'm glad I went away. <laughs> 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 I was on the board. <laughs> I was, yeah. trying to get, I was trying to get some of the guys in a free transfer. You got for that bit of Wi-Fi signal, did you? Uh, well, my Wi-Fi is banging, but some shits went rotten there. So it's, uh, it's not <laughs> like I don't normally have any of these sort of snafus on there. But anyways, it says, listen, guys, I've, I've been away for what well, feels, like, feels like an eternity or the beer's a couple of minutes. So you guys have been carrying it. So is there anything that uh, you wish to finish off on since we're at the top of the hour? No, oh, well, I'll just say quickly that... The last couple of weeks is well. I think the treble was kind of like we bit we bit of a dampener for me knowing what was coming in the corner. I wasn't sure what direction the club was going to take. And if as much as we all slag the board and Demet Desmond for being this absent landlord, I think Celtic have definitely uh, matched the, the, the fans' ambitions here. They've got the best possible manager. But if we walked into a chippy and there was like all scabby chips and a fish supper line there. We've we've chosen the fish supper. We've got the best possible candidate. Uh, I think if you take away Celtic past before and you, and you discount what he did for Celtic before, I think you look at a man who's definitely capable of taking this club forward. And we've as Celtic fans, we deserve the very very best that the club can provide for us because we give everything to the club. We give even the guys in this podcast. We give every every spare minute we can to try and. Uh, create content so to speak and uh, and we spend the rest of our days thinking about Celtic so we deserve the very best and I think the club has provided that for us and this season might be a case of wounds getting healed for a lot of people and that might be the board as well if the board can finally give the Celtic fans what they deserve uh, starting off with the best manager who knows what, club, what direction the club's going to take us in mm -hmm. I'm confident and I'm hopeful that Celtic will surprises uh, this season uh, I'm not going to get downbeat about a couple of signs that might come in and might not be up to standard or up to what we're expecting just now but mm. I just got a feeling Celtic are going to get it right and with this man in charge I think anything's possible and if you caught my rat that's fine that's no bother that's absolutely fine but that's yesterday let's just get back let's back this guy and I think come the first home game when we unfold that flag mm. Celtic fans have got to be clapping him and I, I think if there's anybody that deserves a chance to re-establish that relationship with the fans, it'll be a guy who who let us in the best position we've been in a long time and with £9 million compensation. So, come on, say like Brendan Rodgers is back and he's here for three in a row. Well, one real quick, I just want a quick uh, round robin. As we say, listen, we're certainly on one echo chamber in here and we put up all opinions. Here's one for Brown Warrior, which I think is quite an interesting take, but let's go for that. If 15,000 happy clappers turn up, absolutely fuck all has been learned. Oh. That, we're talking about trying to go off a negative, a, a positive foot, and is that what your takes on that, boys? Do you think uh, it's, it's, is it short sighted? Should we, should we be rightfully getting uh, and you know, supporting the match for the off in our vast numbers? Or, or do you, is that doing for you? Do you think that's just negative? Um, oh, I, I mean, I, I get what I get what Brown Warrior's saying because we we did say like we need to learn and not you know you know we don't don't fall in love with heroes or that kind of stuff. We we're all warned and we all fell for it and we all say we don't want to be stung again. But I just I don't know, I'd rather I'd rather was fifteen thousand happy clappers you know cheering on the team and you know having a positive start to his second uh, tenor, uh, tenure in charge. Sorry, I'm getting tired here. Um, <laughs> rather than us all. Uh, you know, we're booing right away. It doesn't doesn't set us off to a great start to the season. And then, of course, we've already got a negative media that always trying to put a bad spin on things. I don't know if we need our own fans to do it. So, but I get what I get. But Brown Warriors' concerns. He's he's made his his uh, position quite clear, and he's totally entitled to that. Uh, I wouldn't call it negative, but I certainly would say I think we could go with a more. Um, I'd, rather, I'd rather see the happy clappers cheering us on than uh, than booing away uh, right from the start. You know, boo us, boo it if it's not working. I think I don't think it's not going to work. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. But no, I, I agree. Positive. So yourself, Phil. Last word to yourself. Mark's going to be down there. He's going to buy another ten Celtic taps. He's going to buy a foam finger, a cap, a scarf. The whole shooting match. He's going to be sitting, getting Brendan yep. Rodgers large. Yeah. Uh, where are you at with me? Is it? Uh, would you like? Would you welcome? 
large numbers down at the stadium. Do you think that's um, you know, anything that we need? Yeah, I mean that that would be amazing. I do know that what Mark said's right. Uh, John Paul Taylor, the liaison officer, did say the stadium won't be opened. But then again, if that many people turn up, they might have no choice but to open it. But he did say on Twitter the day that they're not planning to open the stadium, but the Celtic Way is obviously available. But yeah, if if we did get numbers similar to the last time, then I think they'd have no choice but to to let yeah. them in. Um, which would be pff, would be mad if that repeated itself. Uh, overall, yeah, I, I don't know if I give you the term happy clappers. You know, we can't. Uh, you know, we talked about unity earlier on. That's the key here. We cannot be, you know. Having a his debut, his unveiling essentially, and you know, it's very divisive where there's a whole play for our fans down there booing him and stuff like that. It's like that is not the image we ought to be giving off right away. I see a lot of fans have just from taking a sample from reading online earlier. So many were just like, Look, I wasn't happy with the way he left, but you know, for the greater good, I'm going to obviously knuckle down and you know, get behind the guy, and that's just what we've got to do. And you know, I put myself in that category if we've got a manager in that I was happy because obviously I'm ecstatic that we got Brendan Rogers back because unapologetically, I've been a pure Brendan Rogers fanboy the whole time. <laughs> but if we put a manager in that I was happy about, I would just have to go, that's the way it's going to be. Same when Neil Lennon got the job in 2019, I wasn't exactly thrilled about it, but again, I'm just like, well, this is the way the club want to go, I've just got to get on with it. I, yeah. I don't understand the mentality a lot of fans are talking about giving season tickets back and all that, and it's like, oh, come on now. Oh, come yeah. on. That I mean, exactly. Well, there's the a big thing is, list, apparently. There's a big well, list. well, the thing is, um, the, the talk about fans learning their lesson, as Brown wants to put it, is, is fans not learn their lesson what happens when you demonise a manager like what happened to Lennon? Mm-hmm. That, that's the lesson you want to learn. When you demonise a manager, the results are... It, it, it transcends onto the park and transcends a man's mental health, which makes Celtic a, a worse team. Mm-hmm. I call, you can't call 15,000 fans or 20,000 fans happy clappers. A happy clapper is somebody who applauds every decision the club make, regardless of the outcome. Regardless, this this is this is the outcome yet. What's that man done before that, that deserves him not to have any chance to redeem himself? Did they walk here and like like shit in the Celtic crest? Did they misquote Tommy Burns? Did they walk down to London uh, after three months of negotiating, trying his best to get his sell out of Celtic? No, he did not. No, I mean, it, Brown Warriors, he put in a, a 525 billion word essay last week on the, the, the YouTube channel. I couldn't, the community page, and I, I couldn't read it all. You know, I've not got a very good attention span. So I know he's against them. And that's fine, Brown Warrior. That's I'm the last person to tell somebody not have an opinion on Celtic. So you batter on me, and I'm definitely debating with you anything you want. Yeah. But I just think, see, when you're so transfixed on demonising this man, look what happened to Neil Lennon. And you're, you're talking about a lesson being learned. You will never, ever, ever back Celtic properly if you're demonising a player or a or a, a manager. That's just not going to work. This guy's in charge. See yourself you score a goal. Are you not going to cheer it? You're going to cheer it just as much. You back this man. You can bring in Ange Postacock in five years' time when they get sacked for Rotherham United or something, if you want. He'll not get this abuse. No. Brendan Rodgers was a better manager. In fact, talk about longevity. He's a long, he's the longest serving manager since 2005 with Gordon Stratton, all other than Neil Lennon. He lasted three and a half years in, in England in the Premier League, in a league that whose most managers leave after what for one and a half years. So, yeah. he, so he, he, um, a man who should have left the, at the beginning of the last season, when you think about it, he knew he wasn't getting back, but he still stayed at Leicester. He could have quit his job at Leicester on the back of a semi final, two five, two top five finishes, an FA Cup, and a Community Shield. And his only trajectory was up the way. We only go up to that. So don't slack, don't we can't say this man is any loyal or slag his longevity when even managers come and go after 18 months, 24 months, or in Ange Potter Coco's case, 20 months, 22 months. A guy who was negoc- a guy who was negotiating a tour of Asia while his agent was on the phone trying to get him a job in England. A guy who was negotiating and still players to come in while he's while he was negotiating trying to get out the fucking door. Let's be honest here, Steve. No, well, listen, mate, as we say, we're all about, brought that up at the end, there's no sort of intent to have a, a back and forward between um, one or two commenters and ourselves. As we say, we're all about free opinion here, 
you know, right. Brown's put it out there. That's why we put it up. You know, it's not to not to put somebody down. It's to say, here's a take. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And yes, I have read your replies, mate. I, I read most of the replies, um, and I believe that I did respond to you. So we say is that's the, the great thing about the Celtic fans and being a football fan is we're never going to have opinions. We're never go, we're never going to sort of agree on every opinion. That's perfectly fine. I think the main thing is is that we've got a level of respect for everybody's opinion. Um, find the middle ground. But listen, we've talked over an hour. I do apologise for my short dropping out there. I'm sure the guys sorry. held it together. As Again, don't apologise. Better, better that I have. Listen, I'm a nice guy. I'm going to apologise. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm supposed to be doing a job here and it falls out because man, and it was wretched. But there you go. Mm-hmm. But anyway, listen, over 300 of these consistent in here, as always, we completely appreciate you doing that, as we say, and will we continue to be here? So, Phil, as we go into Friday, are we finally getting that Brendan Rogers episode? Of course we are. Course. There we go. Why, why is it not? Going be, is it going to be the usual time travel crew? Uh, yeah, I would expect that. Um, yeah, it'll be uh, Liam. Uh, he's been on for a few weeks now, uh, so we can try and get him on as well. We had a meeting last week when we first of all were just doing a sort of just a general show about Brendan, funny enough. Um, but yeah, he's he's uh, been unavailable the last few Fridays, so hopefully we can get him on. In fact, the Friday for that, I was unavailable because I couldn't even speak. Um, but yeah, <laughs> tomorrow night I will be back. Nostalgia will be back after a wee two week uh, hiatus, so the wee summer break for it. Yeah, I'll be doing a Brendan Rogers special um, for anyone because we've got a lot of viewers on live right now. If anyone that hasn't actually watched the episode of Nostalgia before, then uh, by all means, if you're new to it, mm. by all means, come on, check it out. We're going down the old. Uh, uh, it's, it's basically the retro show that we do. It's one of the few shows that's very different from every other show that we do. Everything else is very much what's going on right now is Celtic. Let's discuss it. This one's a more a retro show, and yeah, it's going to be a retrospective on Brendan, what he was doing before Celtic. Um, you know, but and obviously we'll look back on his first period. We've done all the seasons individually, but it's a more a collective thing of um his time at Celtic the first time around. What we can expect again, hopefully, going into Brendan version two. So, yes, that will be okay. tomorrow night. Nine o'clock. o'clock. You know what that means. Get yourselves there, as we say. Mm-hmm. Thanks again for everybody watching. Well, tomorrow is the D Day. It's the final. It's the official unveiling. He's going to have the head, the scarf above his head. Mm-hmm. The cycle's about to start, isn't it? You know, typically in my opinion, the sequels are better. Terminator Two, Aliens, <laughs> of course, mm-hmm. Godfather Part Two, and the Dawn is returning because he's back. The Mora and a couple of heads probably over the other side of Glasgow come the end of the season, are going to roll. Thanks to every single one of you again who have taken the time to tune in. Take care of yourselves. Yes, God bless. He's right up the way.